gives me first heading gives me so my next question is what flooding gives us what is the result of flooding lsps are made lsps are disseminated through flooding and in the process of uh, lsp dissemination we said uh, in flooding we would take care of the duplicate packets and old and new packets with the help of sequence number and age so after all that what we will get we will get a database you can loosely call this yes we will get a database you can loosely call it routing table but you will get a database and what is the characteristic of this database it is common to all so this is what uh, qualifies us to have a uh, full topology why because this is a collection of all lsps right so we make our lsps we disseminate them based on flooding uh, why we do that because we need which is the heart of our processing because if the database is there then only i can make a tree and i can make a forwarding table or i can make a table and i can make a forwarding table if i don't have database i cannot do any of the processing we just uh, finished talking about so that means that the heart of the whole process is broadcasting so having a broadcasting means living on poison it is same as we are surviving on poison because that is very harmful all the bad things you can imagine that can happen in a network operation they are kicked in by broadcasting so it is same someone is telling us if you want to live the only way you can live is by eating poison so now we are saying okay i have no other choice than living with poison then can i make a strategy that even with poison i can live that's what ospf does the entire ospf has been designed with a single objective in mind that is single point agenda we cannot live without broadcasting if we don't do broadcasting link state would not work it is same as if we don't eat poison we would not live so you have to eat poison okay how i may lengthen my life though i have to eat poison 
how I may bring an efficiency to my network operation, though I have to survive on broadcasting. So OSP have a single point agenda to reduce the impact of broadcasting. Everything which is done in OSPF is circled around a single nucleus. That is how we can reduce the impact of broadcasting. I give you some examples how we accomplish it. So let's say this is an AS, autonomous system. It is running OSPF. So I will do a number of steps to reduce broadcasting. So the first step I do is I divide my entire network I divide the entire networks into areas. This is one step I take. What I get by doing that? If I have n nodes, I'll be having n into n minus one, or maybe over two, or one of them, those many broadcasts I have to send or maybe an n minus one, right? What I do is I divide my, let's say if I have 100, uh, let's say 30 nodes. So I would do 30 into 30 minus one or maybe over two, I'm not sure what the formula. So those many sort of adjacencies I would have. So what I do is instead of that, I divide it into three parts hypothetically. So areas are hypothetical. Areas are hypothetical, so I don't have any. So these are just logically I make areas. So what I do is I would keep uh, in each of these, so I will keep, let's say 10, 10, and 10. So I would change my equation from 30 to 30 minus one over two. I would change it to 10 into 10 minus one over two multiplied by three. And there is a big saving in this. So what I do with the areas is I try to do one of the attempts to reduce broadcast. How I reduce it? Because broadcast in this green area will not go out of green area and broadcast in yellow area will not go out of yellow area and same is true broadcast will not go out of this yellow area. So that's why there is no areas, no OSPF. So when you start configuring as you might have done in your uh, telecom lab, and they might have told you, don't worry about that, just do it. Or people who have done CCNA kind of those things, they would know. So no areas, no OSPF, why? Because that is my primary tool to break broadcast. When I do that, then I have to bring in um, complexity of details. So, so, okay, areas, how they would be, they would be numbered. So out of them would be an area called area zero, which is my backbone area. So every one, if I have to make any one area, to start with, at least you need to have one area to start with for an OSPF network. And that area has to be named. There's a 32 bit uh, ID you can create, uh, name a number for your area ID. But there is specific area zero ID, which is reserved for the backbone area.
So you must have one area in your OSPF network at least in order it to work, that would be area zero. And then you can have other areas as yellow and the others, and you can name them anything which would come in 32-bit. But there must be an area zero. Then if I divide this network in logically into those areas, then how it would work collectively as one network, because now I have created three segments of the network, how it would work as a collective network. When Broadcast is not supposed to go out from one area to the other. Anybody who want to guess? No guess. Then I have to make, you know, see, and they say, when you tell one lie, then you have to tell 100 lies to cover it. So I'm trying to do, to cover the, uh, and that is a criticism on the network protocols as well. Let's say you start with solving a problem, then you run into other problem, then you, you know, bring in another step, another step, so that's what I'm doing here, right? So now, I mean, I, I made a decision of making an area, then I have to make a lot of other decisions in order to sort of go through that decision uh, successfully. So then I said, you know what? I will have uh, I will have the routers which I will have here. They will be special routers. They would be different than some router, let's say, which is here, or some router which is here. So these routers at the border, at these borders they would be different from the routers inside. What is the difference between them? So these, they can send a summary from one area into the other area and vice versa. 